welcome to my demo on how to branch using Microsoft Forms. Um, it's a really neat thing to be able to do. It's, a, it's great for assessment and for anything else really that you can think of. Uh, basically branching is a way um, students or whoever will answer a question. Based off of the answer to that question, they'll be taken to a different question or to a different section and whatnot. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, I've already done the legwork in this. I've already created a quiz that I'm going to use as the example, uh, just so that I can walk you through it. And you don't have to see me typing out the quiz and getting all the answers and things like that. Uh, but the first thing you are going to do is you are going to go to forms.microsoft.com or forms.office.com and you will sign in with your Microsoft username and password. And you can see here, I've got a couple of things that are already on my screen. You can either choose to create a new form or you can create a new quiz. In today's example, I am creating a quiz. It's my branching example quiz. So I'm just going to open that up right now so that we can take a look. A couple of things I want you to notice first. I have five points on this quiz. I'm gonna do a quick scroll as so you can see. Uh, I've got more than five questions, okay? My question starts here at number three, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute or two here. But as you can see, I've got more than five questions listed here. I go all the way down to number 11. And I'll talk about why my test is out of, or my quiz, I guess I should say, is out of five and, and not out of the 11, or actually out of the nine, which I have nine math questions here. The very first thing I always do when I create a quiz, for those of you who have never used Microsoft Forms before, is I will always give my quiz or my test a title, and then I will always give it a subtitle. So in, in this uh, case, it's for an event that I'm doing at the Microsoft Store. Um, but if this was being done in class, I would then say um, uh, probably the date at which I am doing it or the, the classes to, for which I'm giving this test to. The first section of every test that I do is the identifier question. So who are my students? Who's writing this? Um, I do collect their email addresses, but when I'm going and marking it and putting it into my grade book, I, I want to see who that person is. So I will ask them for their name and then they will pick their home rooms. Now, this is not marked. This is not assessed. There are no points attached to these. As you can see, I've got uh, no points listed there. Um, and I use this so that afterwards, when I export my results into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, I can then organize it. I can I can sort it by a home room. I can sort it by name. I can sort it by uh, the mark that was achieved. And there's all kinds of different things that you can do from there. And the first section of my form is always my identifier questions. And then the section the sections after that are the sections uh, to which I am going to assess my students. So in the example I'm using today, I'm using algebra. I'm not a math teacher. It's been a long time since I taught math. Uh, so this is part of the reason why I did this ahead of time is so that you don't see me flustering through copying out the questions and trying to figure out the answers and that kind of stuff. And as I'm going through, you'll notice that I'm definitely not a math teacher based on some of the options I'm giving them. Uh, but this example that I'm sharing today is to show you how to use the branching. And it's not so much the assessment side of the curriculum. So I've got nine questions. They start at question three and they go all the way down to question 11. And as I'm scrolling, you might notice that certain questions are assessed with one point and other questions don't have a point. And that is because um, my odd numbered questions, so my three, five, seven, nine, and 11, those are the questions that I, let's say on this example, those are the questions I want to assess my students on. If they get the question correct, they move on to the next point value question. So if they get question number three correct, for example, that you can see that it's C, they will then move on to question number five. If, however, they don't complete question or they don't um, answer question number five correctly, and by the way, in the actual test, they will see this as question number two, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But if they answer this one incorrectly, it will then take them to a building block question, question number six. They will try question number six, and either way, they will then move on to question number seven, so on and so forth, until they're done the test or the quiz, I guess. So 
let's take uh, a preview here. Let's pretend we're taking a test. So my name is Homer Simpson, and I am in 9B. That's my identifier. So I have all my students uh, put that information in. Okay, so this is a test on algebra. So this question is worth one point. I'm going to answer this question correctly. The answer is C, and it moves me on to my next question, which here is number four. But when I was creating my test, it's actually question number five. This one is worth one point. I'm going to get this one wrong. I'm going to put the answer as A instead of the actual answer, which is D. I got this one wrong, which brings me to question number five. Okay, so I'm going to answer this one. I'll answer this one correctly, and it will bring me on to my next question. I will answer this one correctly. I will then answer this one correctly. And it brings me to my last question, and let's just answer this one correctly. Okay, so I wrote on here one, two, three, four, five, six questions. Once I submit it, I will see my results. Thanks for viewing my demo slam. Uh, my view of my results. I wrote six. I answered three questions correctly. Okay, so that's how we do that. So let's go back and let's take a look at the actual branching that I was doing here. So up in the corner, I'm going to click on more settings, the ellipses, and I will choose branching. Here I will see the questions that I made earlier uh, behind the scenes as I was creating this exam. Uh, here's my question. And then I've got my branching options for each option of my quiz. So if they answer question number three as 8x plus 6, and that's an incorrect answer because I've already identified my correct answer, they will then go to question number four, which in my example here, it's a building block question. Okay, now again, don't judge me. I'm not a, I'm not a math teacher. This is obviously not a building block question, but uh, for this demo slam, Let's pretend that it is. So for each incorrect answer, they will jump to the building block question, which in my exams are the even number questions. So two, four, six, eight, ten, so on and so forth. If they get the question correct, then they go to my odd numbered questions on my exams. So three, five, seven, nine, eleven, so on and so forth. So I'll click here and it will jump down to question number five. Question number five. This is a points, this is worth points. So same thing. If they get this question incorrect, they go to the next building block question, which on this example is question number six. Otherwise they jump to question number seven. Regardless of how they do on the building block question, in this assessment, they still move on to question number seven. Now, if I was sitting with my PLT, if I was sitting in math and we were creating uh, a number of these exams, then for sure I would then have proper building block questions and maybe even two or three building block questions until the students are confident so that they can write those uh, points-based questions. And then after I've done all that, after I've set up all my branching, as you can see here, I've quickly scrolled through, um, then I can simply go back to my exam. And from here, I can choose whether or not I wanna have a theme. You can see I put the chalkboard theme. Kids don't know what a chalkboard is, so that's why I use that one. And then I can choose to share it. I can either send them uh, the link that I have, or I can paste the link and I can attach it to my Google Classroom. Um, I can email it if I, if I choose to. If this, it depends, I guess, on your PLT and how you decide um, how you want to share this form or how you want to use these forms. But in a nutshell, that's how you branch using Microsoft Forms. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, and maybe it will be of some use to you. So thank you for watching my demo slam.